unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. Yeah, my dad, walk on. <laughs> What's going on? None. Man, Boss Talk 101, we back, man. Say, we got a very, very special guest today. One that really don't need an introduction, man. Um, I mean, he brought us a lot of lot of music back in the day, man, and to this day, man. I'm going to be real with you, man. This brother right here is a multi-platinum producer. You know, he this is the mo and go. You know, mm -hmm. like go album, platinum album, you name it. He done done it, man. Mr. Lee is in the building. What's going down? Man, what's going on, man? Chilling, chilling, man. Man, I owe you all the thanks in the world. I ain't gonna even sit here and lie <laughs> to you, man. I told KLC when he was on here the same thing, and I'm gonna tell you the same thing, man. Hey man, thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Because I never I didn't I wasn't even I was so busy in the streets, I never looked beneath. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I was young. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It wasn't until I got older that I started to understand the process of the music, man. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Lee, man, uh, thank you. And, uh, man, hey, man, keep on doing your thing, man, with what you do, because I love them sounds, man. Appreciate Say, it. Say, man, so. But I want to ask something first before you get into it. You don't anything. want me to go into anything? I want to ask something first because it's so crazy. Mr. Lee. The first time I heard Mr. Lee, I'm thinking is somebody Asian is going to come in here. Everybody <laughs> say that. So, so I look up Mr. Lee and I'm like, hold up. What's his real name? And I'm yeah. like, why do they call you Mr. Lee? That's just something that stuck when they when I first started doing my music production. I didn't have a name. So the, and you have to have a name. Everybody yeah, has the a C, name. The CFO of rap -A -Lot, believe it or not, Bruce Tovo, had gave me that name. That's, really? That's heavy. If how you used to call me generally, it was, man, it was like 1995. And you yeah. were how old? I was like 20. 20, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, I so know. So you started young in the business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so just tell us, I want to I want to go back to, to uh, Alexandria. Mm -hmm. I want to go back home. Because that was home, right? Yes. Pineville. 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 Yeah. yeah, Pineville. Yeah. But is, is it close to uh, Alexandria? Yeah, it's close to yeah, Alexandria. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how is, is that a big uh, population? No. A small? It's a small city. Okay, okay. So you down there, you 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 pretty much, something drove you out of there, which I think I, I know what it was, like my story. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like something drove you away from there, but it was God, really. All the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you... um. How old were you when you uh when you left there, and were you doing music when you was down there? Yeah, I was. I had a rap group. We were we were doing little records and mixtapes back then, and I was probably twenty two when I left. Okay, because you yeah. started out, you was playing the piano early on. Wasn't yeah, you? I was a I was a church musician. I had two churches that I played for. I started playing at one when I was nine. Wow. Yeah, that's heavy, man. Yeah. So you so did you know then that you was you had a gift? Not really. No. Not really? No, nah, I'm not going to tell you. You were just it. doing it just to do it? I, just loved, cause it, I loved it, though. You loved it? I had it. a love for it. You, you know had what a saying? love. So the love for the music and playing in church, and then my dad is a solo singer at church. You know what I'm saying? I traveled with him to countless churches, played for him, and just the love he had for it and the love that he gave me to, to play the music, you know what I'm saying? That was something that I, that I had that, I, that stuck with me all through school. Wow, so that was a connection you and him had. Yeah. That's heavy, man. Yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. My dad had a connection with me, too. Yeah. Yeah, but it was in the woods, pump music, <laughs> working, man. My yeah. shoulder hurting right now. He left me that. Mm -hmm. But he he instilled, I guess, ownership and having a business yeah. early on. So I think him and my uncles, you know, so that was something that, that I think I value to this day. But so. as a child, you didn't see that. No, 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 no. Hey, as no, you I got thought, older, no. you realized yeah. what the lessons yeah. were. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't see it early you on. Couldn't see it. No. I thought he was crazy. And just like our kids, yeah. our kids can't see it right now. No, they had appreciate it later, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when you came from uh, down there in Louisiana like that, man, and you came up, I, I read somewhat about it that you were uh, were you running from trouble? Yeah. Yeah, I had a I had a simple burglary charge in Louisiana, and I uh, had a a drug case, a marijuana trafficking charge in Anawet County. Okay. Because you know, I mean, once I got in trouble in Louisiana, I started selling drugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know That's what, what everybody was doing. Then. Yeah. But so so, you know so what, oh sorry to, to interrupt, mm -hmm. but I want so you never wanted to be a rapper in the beginning. No, not really. No. Because most people even. Although they ended up being a producer, it was different. They back always then. start yeah. off being a rapper. Yeah, I was a producer first. And then yeah, we had, he a rap, was. we had a rap group, 
and I started that's rapping. That's so crazy. That's when different. I, when I read his story, when I was reading up on you, I was looking at Zay Tobin because he plays still t- to this day in the church. Mm-hmm. And I had hit him up. We talked back and forth the other day. And I was like, man, that's kind of like Mr. Lee. He, he started out of it. But this guy, I guess he still, you know, he helps mm-hmm. him and stay. I guess it keeps him humble, but he still does his other music. Yeah. But, man, I, I mean, just something about having a good foundation mm-hmm. to where mm-hmm. you, you come from a place of music like that is to be respected. Period. Mm-hmm. For yeah. me, that's the way I look at it. Now, I might not be. I just know it's a respect there because you got some type of morals when you're yeah. dealing with that. You're, am I right? You have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you were telling us about the trouble in the streets of Louisiana. Yeah, let's get yeah. back to it. I mean, you know, everybody goes, this is a small, small town. So if you get in any kind of trouble, it, it gets out there quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you lose jobs yeah. and all kind of stuff. It's printed all in the paper. So, yeah. you know, I went from this clean cut to getting in the streets. Did you get a secret indictment? No. Nah. Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> and how but old were you? I had to be in about 19, 20. Okay, so everything happened to you back to back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It yeah. was God. Yeah. That's the way he drives you. I would have never got out of there if it wasn't for it. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. it. So, so yeah. and, and, and so d- let me ask you this, because this is something I did when I ran from my situation. In my mind, it was bigger than what it really was when I was running. Yeah. But I, when I faced it, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't even what I. It, this ain't the. This the first time, not the, not okay, the big not whammy, the big okay. but this is what I. What drove me up to Dallas? Yeah, and I was like, I, in my mind, I thought they had me. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking, I had, from, no, I'm talking about had me, had me in a hard yeah, place, but it wasn't yeah, as bad. Where, where I came from, it was they had me. They you had, me. and I was gonna be looking at about eight years. And okay. that was your first time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had, I, a, I had a. a a public defender. For oh, time. man, he going to sell you out. Yeah, and it was a black dude, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I don't care. His name he really going to sell you out. preaching that to this day, you know what I mean? And I see him, I'm just like. Well, <laughs> he could have been gone. Yeah, but it was all in God's In hands, God's plans. You know I mean? So I didn't, mm. I can't, I'm not mad at him because, you know, everything happened the way it's supposed to. So when you pull up in, in, in Houston, Texas, this, this bring us bring us up to speed on how the music scene. How'd you get into the music scene in Houston like that? It was a guy named Lakewood. Okay, he was a, a guitar player, and, mm-hmm. and and I met him at the at the guitar center. Okay, and he had a keyboard, the same keyboard I used to work on. He was trying to find somebody to teach him how to work on his keyboard at the guitar center. Wow! So I was like, dude, I know how to work this keyboard. So he used to come and pick me up every day, and we would work on tracks, and I show him different things and coat. Coincidentally, one of his friends worked at the record store that Big Chief, the VP of rap a Okay, owned. okay. So that's how I got my music to rap a lot. And Big Chief was the, actually the guy that signed me. He signed me to his production team. So, wow. so that that's heavy. That's but why real. Houston though, not Dallas? When you when you came Houston, up Houston was close. You know, plus yeah, my that, plug, ideal, my right? plug that I was doing my work <laughs> with. That's it. Was from Houston, so that's who actually put picked me up. And brought okay. me back to Houston. You know, same so. thing with me. I was yeah. coming to Dallas. It's yeah. the same thing. Mm-hmm. I was just wasn't going to Houston, even nah. though, because because coming from where I come from, you can't going up fifty nine trying to get there. All them little old traps they got mm-hmm. going through Nacogdoches and Lufkin. Yeah, to hell with that. <laughs> I'm gonna go straight down twenty, even though I know it can be a hurt or thirty. Yeah, I'm just telling you how it went in my mm-hmm. mind. I'm not messing with that because that's too many. Yeah. And that's the way it was. See, I wasn't sure if it was because of the music. And but he was positioned different. Was and he stuff he like positioned that. in Louisiana. Yeah. So you what I ten? I ten. Yeah. Straight down I ten. Yeah, yeah. We we all had our. This is when it was going down too. Because back then, this thing we was doing really was fresh to the community. It, it ain't been out just a long time. Mm-hmm. The things we were dibbling, dabbling with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, man, I, I like the story because it reminds me of me. But even though yours went a totally different way, and you did some things that, hey, man, nobody will ever do. Right. Nobody. You understand? What I'm oh, like? yeah. Nobody's gonna do it. Yeah. And until this day, you still been doing it. I'm always doing, it, man. I'm gonna let you have the flow because I know you you holding back. What you got? So, um, you know, I hear about it afterwards. Well, you know, I was going to ask this, no, but you I know, still, you were just going in, you know. I, yeah. I ride with a flow of things. I don't ever just plan everything, you know what I mean? Okay. It just depends on how everything's going. And you, I you thought I was the, the one to be shooting from the hip, you know. <laughs> go ahead. So, um, growing up, you had your mom and your dad with you, right? That's, I still do. Hey, man, that's, that's a blessing. Man, that's man, a come blessing. on, man. Yeah. I wish I had my mom and dad. I'm yeah. jealous. I'd be envious of that. I, I love my mom and dad. You should, death. man. That's good. I'll fight behind my mom. <laughs> I know it, man. 
But if I could just, I lost mine at 20, 24. Mm. I was young, man. Matter of fact, it wasn't long after that I really went through some stuff. So, yeah, it, I, yeah, yeah, you blessed, brother. Without a doubt. Mm. And you had siblings? I have one sister. One sister, no brothers. No brothers. No, because I know you said you were heading out on the streets. And so I was wondering how, because we use a platform to help people out here. A lot of kids be watching as well. Mm. So, and they might be stuck in a certain situation or have a decision to make whether, you know, go this way or go that way. So I really think that our platform can educate someone. Mm -hmm. You don't have to take that route. No. You can do this route. Yeah. So, but you having a mother and a father in your life, how comes you ended up on doing what you did? Because, I mean, once you become a man, you have to take your own ways and your own route. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My parents gave me the tools to rebound from what I was going through. Okay. And the mistakes that I was making I was able to understand that, you know what, this is not where I come from. This is not what I'm supposed to be doing. When I got caught in Anahuac County, I ran. Yeah. So I was in the middle of a field. I prayed in that field. Mm, I tell yeah. people that all the time, but it was all. Me and you are so the much alike, bro. It was, it was really the purpose anyway, you know what I mean? Because I, I the things that transpired before this interview are things that I do all the time with every single person that I talk to. Wow. And that's the, the purpose that I have, to talk to people in a spiritual type of way yeah, and have that conversation. With hey, them. So they gave you your space to make your mistakes. They did. See, that's yeah. what I always pray. I always pray, because uh, I know that having children, you raise them the best you can, but you know that the world is going to teach them Yeah, they're going to do it. I told my I son I always that. just pray that God don't take their life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, God, that's, see, the thing about it is, is that it's a free will. Mm -hmm. You put yourself in positions to get your life taken. God is not taking it from you. That's right. Mm -hmm. You offer your life up when you do something. Come on, man. To endanger it. You I told read my what son, you sow? I told my son that. My son's getting ready to go to college. Yeah. And I told him, I said, look, I'm not going to give you the speech about not doing drugs, not drinking, not having sex, not doing, I'm not going to give you none of that. What I'm going to tell you is that, hey, if you're going to smoke weed, make sure you know what you're smoking on. Yeah. If you're going to drink, make sure you're not drinking something that you don't know what that is anything What's in it. In it. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna have sex with somebody, make sure they're not attached with another guy. Make sure they're not, make sure you strapped up. Yeah, make yeah, sure yeah, yeah. That you know everything's in, in order when you rock, rocking around this way, mm -hmm. if that's what you're gonna do. Yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna tell you what you can't do because I'm not, my hands are not gonna be on you. Yeah, exactly. I like that. Exactly, which like is true. This. How many kids do you have? I have a total of seven. I have two. That's my Ooh. God. Come on, man. Ooh. Come on, baby. Give it up for my Mendingo <laughs> warrior here. I have, two <laughs> kids. I have two kids in Houston. Mm -hmm. My oldest son and my oldest daughter. Praise God. And I have, um, I have three stepkids, which are my like my children. They're yours. Like, they're they're yeah. my kids. Those yeah. are my kids. That's where it goes. Two twin boys that are seven. Hey uh -huh. man, that's it right there. The are last of the Mohegans. Hell yeah. <laughs> seven of them. Them, them <laughs> the last two. They identical. So you went out no, with a bang. Twins. Mm -hmm. So you went out with a bang. Yeah, twins. That's it. I'm gone. <laughs> the bad. He's a bad man. Yeah, but I love my kids. I love all my kids the same. Yeah, man. And we do too, I, man. You know what I mean? So, man, that's it's just. I just always want to try to be an example to them, and also let them know the struggles and challenges that I have and that I go through, and how I overcome them. Because life is not perfect. You can't shield. A child from trouble man when i went through you know, like different that's things so true. if yeah. i go through something or if my kids go through some of my older kids you know i tell them mm -hmm. i'd be like i didn't give you a good example because i didn't stay with your mother and this right here because i got two older kids mm -hmm. but you know um i try to make it up we've been together almost 20 18, years now mm -hmm. 18 years you know mm -hmm. so it's like i'm trying to show you you can change but i know i didn't give you a good example early on to try to stop that generational curses yeah you see what I'm saying? You got to be honest with them, like, instead of trying to act self-righteous. And that's yeah. what we do a lot of time as parents. Yeah, I'm never going to do that. You see what I'm saying? I, it really expressed the fact of what I am and who I am so that they'll see what I went through, the turbulence. Yeah, but it's, it's not really a generational curse. It's just a mistake. Yeah. People turn it into a generational but curse. It's my not, daddy did it, too. Yeah, but it is what it is. He probably wasn't taught either, though. But then exactly. when it's passed down from generation yeah. just passed, in the same it's generation. But it's keep going. It's passed it's, down because it's taught that way, but it's not a curse, though. No, I, I wouldn't say it's a... Uh, that's people, a harsh people, word, right? Yeah, <laughs> it is a harsh word. 
it is taught, but and sometimes it's not taught verbally. It's taught mm. by I'm seeing yeah, the way you see how it. you. That's, do. that's yeah. what it is. If you right. see so that, then you subject you, and you, you do what you see. To, you know, unconsciously, you can do that. But you yeah. know what I hate about? Um, I like that, I, and I'm not just saying that. Right. You know, far as for the curse part, because mm-hmm. that's something that I I I tell you, it, it's something that you don't see in what mm-hmm. I believe in, mm-hmm. but it's something that people say. Yeah, yeah. but you got to understand. You so I get say, what you're saying. What you say is more powerful than, than what, what you, you do. do. Right. That's right. right. I get it. See, I'll people always, I'll, I'll stand to cor- be corrected because yeah. I know I read. It, it's so not, it's, it's not easy. It's, you know what I'm like, saying? It's just like with me beginning to get into money and yeah. having money and making money. I've made millions of dollars. Of course. But Hey, my parents didn't couldn't teach me how to manage money that well because mm-hmm. we was living check to check. That's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I can't put the responsibility that of what they didn't tell me because they didn't know it. Number one, number two, it comes a point in time where you have to seek your own understanding for things but, and knowledge of it, and 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 look at it for what it really is. Mm-hmm. Once you become a man and any that kind of shit, it's, everything is out there. But the and in, sorry, but in today's generation, I I say that it's so much more easier mm-hmm. to change that pattern mm-hmm. because we have internet. Yeah. Where it is freely ready for anybody who has a phone, and almost everybody has a phone. They yeah. can research so much to learn things. That's why people yeah. say, "Oh, this wasn't afforded to me." Okay, but in today's society, it is. Everything is. Yeah. So it's only you're lazy. You're too lazy to look it look it up. Exactly. Let and me. we all are somewhat at fault at that because we all don't look up everything that we should. Yeah. I was just gonna say, like when you said your mother and father couldn't teach you those those ways, the, the the financial you know aspect of how you're dealing with your business because it's growing in a place where they didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. But the street life for me showed me like the numbers that I start dealing with with the street life showed me how to even evolve into my business. I'm yeah. gonna be real with you. That, that was a part of it. Without mm-hmm. the things that I had dealt with in the streets. And the ways that I was coming up, I would have never seen those numbers. Yeah. I wouldn't have never seen six figures like that yeah. early in an early age, or or, or 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 five heavy five figures. You know what I'm saying? I'd have never, I'd have never seen that stuff. But Same now, here. I but mean, the streets I showed I you either. that. I mean, streets gave me hustle. You know that's so. right. That's right. And that's all I just wanted to say that <clears> before I forget, because I know a lot of times we thinking that's a bad thing. Because when we were do- dealing with this stuff, it was a, it was a horrible thing in the yeah. neighborhood. It was. <laughs> It yeah. wasn't. It wasn't something that people look at you like. Oh, that's that boy. Yeah. You, know, you remember? Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. And the old folks watching TV, so they seeing you too. They like, oh, that's such and such son. Look at Lee. Yeah. Lee, yeah, Leroy. Yeah, yeah. That, he ain't worth that. But I'm telling you, Leroy, <laughs> mom and them and dad and them tried the best they could. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was in that in that folder for a little bit. Right, right. I know you was because yeah. I was in it. Yeah. So go ahead. No, but it's so crazy because I always say that um, in everything that we do. Negative, there's a way in which you can turn that negative into positive oh, yeah, because everything God allows us to go through is a testimony to help someone else. That's why I tell people when you go through things, don't be ashamed of what you go through and don't keep it for yourself. No, you want to always tell it because for me personally, telling it also heals me. Mm-hmm. It's not also it's not always for that other person, but it can also help yourself right. to get over certain situations. Right. And yeah. not make that situation have power <clears throat> over you. Because when you hide it, you're making it have power over you. Yeah. Mm. So you know the thing. I, 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 let's get back to the. Let, let's get back to the to the, the man. No, Mr. Lee. Okay. You know what I'm saying? The man, the legend. You know what I'm saying? The guy who. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he don't want to hear that, but it's true, man. Ain't nobody gonna do. I'm not for to give nobody no roses while they dead. No, I'm for to give them their roses while they here. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when people come here, Mr. Lee, I'm going to have you to come back on here, too, because we got a little something I want to do for you, too. So when I call you back, I pray that you'll come. You know what I'm saying? I got uh, who we got. I'm supposed to have Mystical on the 4th of July. So, you know, we're doing different things for different people that, that, I mean, when they come on this platform, I I do little things for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I know already it means something. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, everybody don't do stuff for people Mm -hmm. when they should. You know what I mean? And we can't sit back and wait for people to applaud us when we know we great. 
Yeah. Man, come true. on, brother. You know dang well what you done and where you come oh, from, yeah. brother. And having this on you, that's a whole nother level. Don't yeah. play with me, man. You know, yes. I know because I live it. Yeah. You know, so. I just not even knowing that you're great because a lot of people are humble in the, in the type of career that they're in. Yeah. It's just knowing the, the work that you put in. Yeah. And. I think it's good to feel appreciated. Oh, without a doubt. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, when, when let's, I'm going to get to the music because I know that uh, when KLC was there, me and him, we had a little conversation about breakdancing because mm-hmm. I was a bad boy. <laughs> and I, you know, I had to let him know, nigga, you, you caught me. I moved to Vegas and I came home. I had my cardboard box under my arm, nigga. Yeah. You don't want to run up on me talking about you going to do. Well, you know, I was bad. Me and Mystical used to compete. I don't care. I'm saying, but competing. That's what I wanted to ask about. So when you were doing your run, they were doing their run. Mm-hmm. He told me they did so many albums in a year, and he was like happy about that number. Then he made some examples of, uh, of, of I think the examples he gave me was a Puff Daddy, mm-hmm. Nim, and uh, Dre Nim. How many albums Master P Nim came out with? But I didn't think about y'all. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I don't remember the year exactly what he was telling me. But you guys was working like crazy yeah. during that time. People in the South were working. They just wasn't getting recognized yeah. like the other people was, right? Definitely. So <clears throat> when you were coming up with these with, with these beats and stuff and dealing with the Phil Ford boys, and di- well, first of all, how did you, I know you say Big Chief brought you in. Yeah. And Big Chief was the one brought you in. Now, how, how was meeting uh, 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 Jay Prince for the first time? And it was cool. I mean, like y'all were young then. Yeah, I mean, Jay Prince is the man. You know what I'm saying? It was real cool. And one thing about it is, uh, Jay gave me an opportunity when nobody else would. You know, what I mean, yeah. Big Chief did. And Jay Prince followed right in the in the whole situation with that. You know what I mean? That's and it, it it really was his leadership that caused Chief to give me the the, the position that I had. You know wow. what I mean? So. I learned a lot from them guys, man. Was he structured like he is now back then? Yes, I always have been. I mean, really? Yeah, yes. that's heavy, man. At that 23. Some, right. 22. Serious. Serious. You'd think that over time people get that way after learning certain things, but you said he's always been that way. That's crazy. Yeah, but Mr. Lee, y'all y'all was a big impact around yeah, I learned. I learned a lot from dude because of that. His poise. Yeah. His willingness to help people. And you know, I mean, it even take on the whole issues with adversity with people, you know, talking about him because that's part of the business, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you have to be ready for all aspects. And he, this, this man had an old soul then, and he still do. You know what I mean? He's, a, you can he's say wise, it. man. Very respectful. Yeah, he's wise. I learned. I'm. I'm. I'm still learning sh- shit from him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I might not tell him that, but I do. <laughs> but you know I see. I, mean? I, I wonder. I'd be like, you know what? When I used to sit by myself and talk shit about this motherfucker about this shit he was doing I understand why he's doing it now <laughs> that's the you way it be man? right yeah and I look back man. on it and it's a lot of lessons in, in the situations that he and I had and I'm, I'm and even just watching him do business and watching him the way he handled certain people and why and all of this kind of shit I really understand that shit now because yeah Business is business. Friendships is friendship. Yeah. There's you got to be able to decide. You to have right. to separate the, mm-hmm. the two. You know what I mean? And be, just because you cool somebody don't mean that you are supposed to not follow the terms of business that you've been maintaining all these years or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whatever you have set, whatever that business model is, that goes for friends, brother, sister, all of that. You know what wow. I mean? That's, that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? So yeah. being in this business as long as you are, um, or being in this business period, you have to have a thick skin, mm. correct? Oh yeah. yeah. So in the beginning, starting stages, how hard was it for you to um, deal with criticism or deal with yeah. backlashes and yeah, all of that? You that's trash. I'm talking I'm, in the beginning because you know now you you're a veteran over a veteran. I didn't have that. You didn't. No. Really? I came in on fire. <laughs> and, I can t- and I can attest to it because I know the song. Do you know what I mean? I, no, we I know. I, I, didn't, I didn't know. The, I didn't know. I mean, that first album, though, that one didn't go like everything else. That second one went. Yeah, it was over. I mean, once I stepped in and my talent, once I, I had, once I learned how to scale my talent back when I got to rap a lot because I'm a musician. I'm coming straight off of, out of church. So I'm playing everything. I'm just playing yeah. all type of shit. Once I understood that I had to dumb it down 
and take my talent out of it and make the music. And I got around people like Scarface that kept giving me the motivation and, and confirming what I had, being around people like Mike Dean, Nino Joe, yeah. John Beto, just coming straight out the yeah. gate, out the street, being around these people. And I'm soaking up everything so fast and rapidly until, you know what I mean, when I was starting, people used to, they used to call me to come in the studio just to make music because I was making tracks in like five or 10 minutes. I'm mm. still doing it that way. Wow. But when you say you had to take your talent out of it, explain that, I, I'm trying to get that. I had to learn how to dumb down the music Cality of what I used to do, mm -hmm. you know, as far as playing keys, all mm -hmm. of stuff, making Doing stuff too jazzy. Of, oh, okay, had to open the music up and, and play less. Oh, okay, so okay, once okay, I figured okay. that out, and gotcha. I and I figured out, you know, what I mean, really the schematic of how I wanted to make the music, then it was mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, I just, I mean, when you go back to those Fifth Ward Boys albums and stuff that you was dealing with, man, and rap a lot on the whole, and 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 and, and the way that music was coming from Scarface, man, mm -hmm. that's. And I, that's the guy I put against anybody. I tell him, He's I say, listen, rapper I said, if you, go, they be like, Jay-Z this. I said, nah. listen, anybody, and I'm not just saying it because I'm from Texas. If you go <laughs> get them, if you go get them, I'm going to go get Scarface every time. Bro, and I promise you, Scarface you're not going to, the and they're going to tell you. He's that, the greatest rapper. Did you hear what I just said? Lie. They're going to tell you. They're going to have to. <laughs> he gonna make he them is to. like, yes. I'm, I'm telling you, since we started, I've heard more. Scarface more UGK than anything else. Yeah, yeah, else. yeah. Because that's my era, man. Yeah, but Big time. I mean, he's the the originator. He's where DMX, Tupac, Jay Z, Nas, everybody, everybody. got a piece of him yeah. in their music. That's exactly right. We were right. trying to get him on the show. We're still working. Yeah, on Yeah, but him. he was his help. It, it been some stuff. Yeah, going that's on my with, guy, man. Yeah. I mean, we were supposed to play golf when he came here, but yeah, you know, we ended up not linking up. But you know, Scarface and me and Scarface relationship is way deeper than music, but. I always tell people without him influencing me and demanding things out of me, I wouldn't be who I am. Yeah, he mm -hmm. was just here. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but but the thing I can say, this guy, I, I you know, I smoked blunt with him uh, back at Lakeside. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, back long. Y'all don't know nothing about Lakeside. We was at, we, I used to get there early because I didn't really want to pay to get in. I just get there early. I have a lot of money. When I run and I ran out of money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so I was hanging out at the club, Lakeside or RJ's by the lake. This was a long time ago in Dallas. They had these places. Same, that's the same place. And Scarface and uh, Too Short was there. Mm -hmm. And I rocked with him. Many years after that, I, me and Too Short, would, I would see him all the time because he loved coming down south, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but... The thing that that I, I see in you, man, was those those beats, that music, what you done during that time, is crazy priceless. And when you think about um, when when Pimp C came home, you know, I get on Pimp C because that's the, here we go. You got to give me a Pimp C story because, and I don't want what you're giving everybody else either. <laughs> I want to hear about the music process because he was a producer as well. Yeah. And then you come because that's a that's a that's what KL did. He gave me a story about their situation and how he helped him mm -hmm. far as on his producing thing. You was already, you was a vet. You was in it too when he mm -hmm. came to you. Um, what did you, what did he think about your music and the, the way you processed it versus what he was doing? Did I he mean, even think about it? Because he's very particular. Yeah, he is. Oh, he was bad. Very. I mean, he tell people, all, he used to tell people all the time, I had the closest drums to his than anybody else. Did yeah, anybody. really? Yeah, we used to, he used to spend, people used to come to me two or three o'clock in the morning. We'd talk music all night man and you know what i mean i love that dude we were getting ready to see do that the album together right before he died yeah. I, he called he called me the day before he flew out to la and he wow. was supposed to be flying back and i was going to link up with him then wow. and you know it was just a lot of different things he wanted to sit down with me we used to pick each other brain and one thing he used to always say he said man he came to my house and when he we had had this had this situation when he had first came home before okay. I really talked to him and I wanted to get a verse from him. Okay. And I talked to my partner, Mike Moe, and I was like, man, hit up Pimp and ask him what he gonna do for me on a verse. And Mike came back, he said, man, Pimp said 10,000. I was like, man, I ain't doing no fucking 10,000 for my verse. I ain't doing that shit. And Mike was laughing and shit and then Pimp had came out to my house and did a verse for Slim Thug on Slim Thug's album. And I had produced the track and he laid it now, we exchanged our information and all of that shit, and then he started calling. So that was when you first met him? Yeah, that's no, I met him. No, he met, met him, him before, before that. Before that, yeah, but he just, that. but this was when he came home. Yeah. So he had a like this is what yeah. I'm doing now. Yeah. He knew he knew his value went up. Oh, he already knew that. He knew his he value knew, went up. I mean, he's always his value was always up. No, he no, no. But done. coming home after all yeah. that free to pimp C y'all was doing, yeah, that nigga was like, shit, this gonna be ten. <laughs> I'm gonna kill these niggas. So I wasn't really personal with him then. 
You know what I'm saying? And then when he came to my house and he saw what I had achieved and how I was living, he was he's like, man, I need to get your number. I'm gonna talk to. You. I need to talk to you about something. I said, cool. Mm -hmm. He hit me up. He said, man, I need you. I need to sit down with you, man, and pick your brain on some different shit and. We just became friends, you know wow. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's like, man, I just didn't even see how the fuck you got everything you got this fast. I need to sit and see yeah. what's going on, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So we used to talk about shit all the time, man, but he was definitely a super crazy heavy influence on my music. Yeah, too. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, did you see him process any of the music for us to produce it? I did. I had the same drum machine he had. Okay, you know, okay. So y'all you, you know so could they could have conversations yeah. that that, that other people couldn't have. Yeah, that, is was what my, you, that was my dude, man. He used to sit. I mean, I mean he, the dude used to call me and rap over the phone. He'd put a beat on, rap over the phone. And, you know, he'd be like, yeah, man, you know, mother niggas don't know what to do with this shit, man. Yeah. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what to do yeah, with this, so, man. You know, that's how I used to talk and shit. But, you know, Pimp was a super intelligent guy, man. He was. You know, but he and he was so smart until he knew how to turn Pimp C on and how to turn it off. You know, the funny thing is that what when he said that um, he came over and picked his brain to see how he got what he got, remember um, we had Mr. McKay who told us that if we want to know certain things, you go find, we, we would go and find a couple of friends or people that we yeah, knew yeah. who were like millionaires mm -hmm. or who yeah, had I talked way to a lot more of them. Mm -hmm. and sit them down and ask, ask them what questions their story because is. ask their story because it helps motivate you. It helps open certain doors. Yeah. It helps you with information that you might not even be able to find maybe on social media or our internet or I whatever. I mean, it's just, it just really understanding what you're doing. You know yeah. what I mean? Being a rap a lot, I had to, I learned that really quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I learned it faster than any other person did. And they, they, some might not say it, some may say it. I'm one of the most successful people to come from rap a lot. Mm -hmm. you know oh, I saying? know If it. you look at Mike Dean, Mike Dean, that's my brother. He's successful. He's doing a lot of great things. You got a, a you know, of course, of course, Scarface, mm -hmm. Willie D, and all those people. But I'm one of those top five, top ten guys that did that, and I was able to do it because once I learned the uh, the business, and I looked at the examples of what was going on and the re and the relationships that I was gaining and the opportunities that was placed before me, I understood how to navigate in it. Okay, there was the other people that signed the same time I signed, and they didn't get there. Was started being arguments about owning ownership of publishing, of all type of crazy shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they had every right to think how they thought. Yeah. But for me, I felt like okay, you know what? I'm not gonna argue about. I'm gonna grind. Shit. I'm gonna grind it out because one thing about it is I'm coming into a situation and talking about ownership of some publishing that has no value yet. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I'm not worried about that shit. I'm not worried about paying Big Chief twenty percent of management fees because. I know the 20% that I'm giving him, he's putting me in pocket on everything that's coming in here. Oh, really? So I don't have to go do anything. When he say the work is there, I'm showing up and I'm gonna do my job. See that? that and but that's, that's how I got there. That's because of the foundation, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, your foundation kicked in as far yeah. as you, your understanding business yeah. and, and understanding I'm gonna be all right. Your gift is what's gonna make mm -hmm. room for you. Oh, you yeah, know without that. Without a doubt. So you, are, you was one that you really, like I said, when you the producer, man, it's something different too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I could sit here and ask you questions like I, I asked Kale. I was like, Kale, I was like, how did this guy act? You know, when he come, how does he, how does uh, Scarface process his music? Like when he's in the booth, do we just go in there and just start going off? Because everybody's see what I'm different. You would know. I'm just thinking. Nah, I, he think it out. See what I'm yeah, saying? Because every every artist, I mean, is every artist like different. That. Nipsey's huh? like that. Nipsey, see, mm -hmm. you, you can't. I met Nipsey a few times. Yeah, Nipsey, Nipsey. The whole time I've been knowing Nipsey. He it would take him weeks, sometimes months, to complete a record. Like we did the last record that we did together, yeah. which was Blue Laces Two. He did yeah, that Blue in a Laces Two. He did it in a day. Yeah. Wow. Let me go back to yeah. uh, that 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 one that I wanted to ask you about the process of this right here, man. I want to ask you about the process of how that thing. That was a hot, very 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 hot. hot. Yeah, that's vintage, that's vintage, Mr. Lee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was that about, man? Man, I, that was about me resurrecting a song that was done in 1992. Really? Yeah. What song? That song right there was yeah, recorded. Yeah, he, he, he had recorded. It was recorded mm. in 1992. I redid it in 2002. I think it was released in like 2004, 2005. Who did, who did the um, beats before? I, I don't know. I think it might have been Pimp. I don't know. Okay. But it was a real old song. It was a throwaway. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I resurrected. And that song has a lot of, it's, it has a lot 
of uh, stories. It's a, it's a, it's a lot attest, attached to that record. That was the first record I ever did on a computer. Really? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you about the process. How yeah, you, I used, how you I, used up. A, I used a, a, a program called Sample Tank. Yeah. And Battery, and I and I made it in digital performance. Ooh, so did man. he come to you and say he wanted nah, you to, or Pim, you what Pim was in Pimp was in Pimp jail. Was locked up. Well, right. I know brought, that they brought me the the, the uh, recording of this record, mm -hmm. and I and I just I took all stripped everything off and put the beat under. Mm -hmm. Wow, you know what I mean? I brought honestly, and this ain't no knock on nobody. I'm telling you, it's not. But I promise you, if I had if I had made that track and asked for them to rap on it, Pimp might have got it. But I don't think nobody would have got that. That, really? that. that record had rock and all type of shit in it. Yeah, it did. It sure did. It was, it was before its time, really. That's why mm -hmm. it took, it was delayed. It took two more years after I did it for it to be released. But even more crazy, like I said, there's a lot of stories attached to that record. Oh, that's why I, that's why I played it. I remember he got on the remix. Jay-Z, no, Jay-Z got on the original version. He was. I thought that was the remix. Nah, that was the original version. Jay-Z wow. listened to the whole... Bun album, and that was the record that he chose. So, when it when when I, I why did I think that was the remix? Mm -mm. I know cause because you've been when he that said forever. he said uh, Jay Z was like, uh, no, nah, okay. When he did this song, man, I thought that was a I thought it was a remix. Nah, that's no, the original. Been saying that. I didn't think he was on there like that. Yeah, he was on it. Yeah, he got lost in the sauce though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> These Southern boys wrapped him up because I thought for sure I was like, man, it had because you know back then remixes was real. Real popular, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For some reason, I thought that, but I nah, must be wrong. We'll go back and Jay listen sent, to that. Jay sent the, he came up there and he, and he played, picked that song. He, he picked that and he, he picked uh, Keep Pushing too. Oh, you did? He yeah, did. But okay. he, got, he ended up getting on uh, on the Get Throw record. Man, that song was so and that's hard. Crazy. And that's again, that's another story. Nip, that was Nip's favorite song. That was. That. And I believe it because it's yes. one of mine. That's a lot of people's favorite songs. Yeah. Oh, that's a boy Zero and uh, Jeezy, mm -hmm. and 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 that that's, was the last time Jeezy would work with Pimp really yeah. before. He passed I mean, away. it's really man. It's like you when you play that record, it's nothing else that you can play. The only person that has it's two more records that sound remotely the same as that, and it's one by this uh, singer that I did a record for called uh, Body Rock. Okay, and his name is Dewelle. Okay, and that's a knockoff of that record. And then the Three Ray Freak record on Pimp's post. Uh, one of my record, the one uh, Long Live the Pimp, the Three Way Freak is a knockoff of that too. Wow! Which Pimp had actually wrote to that record, you know? What I mean? Really? So, yeah. The, the the knockoff of the of the, of that record, he wrote to it. Do you how all how do all these guys get on that record? I mean, it was just that. Re it was that. How record. did how did uh, did cause Jay was on it? Was it because Pimp no, was going? The, the, Pimp got on it last, right? No. Nah. Bro, the vocals from Bun and Pimp were recorded in 1992. I didn't hear that at first. I thought you were saying the nah, beat was made. They, you saying the vocals was on. No, so yeah, I'm, the whole thing was yes. made. That's what I got. The whole thing was made. And, yes. and, you, and then it came to him and he that's stripped why, that's it why, That's why I'm telling you. I'm, that's why I'm saying what I'm saying. is like I'm an innovator. Okay. Nobody would have rapped on that record, man, because they wouldn't have got what I was trying to do. My little brother, that's slim as my little brother. I yeah, used yeah, to, yeah. Give him beats, and he's like, he said, Nick, I'm not no rock star. I said, exactly. That's what I want to try to make you be. <laughs> like, I sometimes, even like with Slim, like now, Slim is like, you know what I mean? Slim is like my family, you know? That's Slim Thugger. I give this dude some tracks, and it'll be two years later, and he'll pull them out and say, Bro, you still got this track? <laughs> Sometimes, most of the time, I have it. You That's because I mean? you're ahead of your time. And he's like, Man, I got a song for this. And I just I put my head my my head in my hands. I'm like, <laughs> I know you got a song for it because I heard it before you ever did it. That's right. You know what I'm saying? But it's like it take him a while to get. It to take it. a while. You know what wow. I mean? I be so far over the curve still today. I do some shit and man, I can hold on to some tracks for years and then start playing them and everybody like, oh man, that is crazy. I'm like, yeah, I did that like six years ago. It's like, oh wow yeah. that's crazy man yeah. but that's talent man you you mm -hmm. you just usually you can see it's like it's hard for everybody else even on my job today like it seems like everything else is ridiculously hard for others and it make in, in some kind of way god makes it easy it's a because you. The gift, if, you got, if you got the gift then it's it, that's it's second nature i make music like breathing but where yeah. do you get that inspiration like okay do you some um beat makers say i take from old songs 
old um, beats that I've heard and I make it into the newer generation? I take Where it from I take it? it from my emotions. Wow. Whatever I'm feeling that day, it's gonna come out of my music. When I I had uh, two my my wife had two uh, twin bars before the twins that we have now, okay. and they passed away. Okay, sorry to hear that. And I the music was therapy for me. And I can go back and listen to my music and tell exactly how I was feeling. I was excited when I made that record and that I had access to guitars and stuff to do the things that I wanted to do. That's why that beat came out like that. Wow. So what beat did you make when you were sad? Uh, it was a song called Win, Lose, or Draw with yeah, Scarface. Yeah, I seen it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That, um, man, that's a lot. It's, <laughs> it's a lot. You know, I'm meddling, so I'm gonna ask you what, 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 the, how, how was your emotions when you made this? Oh, I was on top of the world. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. I had just got my 600 beans. Oh uh, yeah, you got. Oh, you had one. Yeah. Oh man. With the square head like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Pac was. I was the man, this. bro. I, you know, really, it was a a situation where Kanye was was supposed to be their next producer. They had some type of issue with uh, the first producer they had. Oh, so Fifth White Boys was going to be produced with, with Kanye West? Yeah. Okay. But that record right there is... Um, no, that wasn't Fifth White Boys. That was Do It Die. I'm sorry. Okay. That record was actually a Mary Jane remix. Really? Yes. That's what that was. I can hear that. And they didn't use it. Mm-hmm. And the Fifth World Boys took the record, and it was history. It was history. That Willie D right jumped there, on that one. Bro, that record really got me. That's when the mister came on the lead. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm talking yeah. about, man. Yeah, Fifth World, shout out to the Fifth, Fifth World Boys. Fifth Boys, man. What are you at now? Right. They still working. I mean, E-Rock working man, on the Man, I need to get right them now. on the show. It, bro, least, they, you I, need to get them, man. I, I'm telling you. I'm going to work on that, those, man. Those you got to help me out with that, Cole. Low Life is my cousin. Okay. E-Rock. And 007 are like my brothers. You know I got to get them so, boys on here, yeah. man. Like I said, I be loving because I see what other people are doing and I be like, man, I be wanting to try to get those stories out. Yeah. Like, I know our interview is not going to go like whatever whatever else you done. It ain't going to be the same here because of the way we mm-hmm. our energy is and we vibe and, you know. Yeah. And I just like the process of music. People need to know about that. Yeah. Especially the younger generation. We complain about the younger guys. But a lot of times we ain't giving them something to look at. I, I, I believe mean, even, that. even if they looking at it, if it don't look a certain type of way, they, they ain't gonna even accept it. Yeah, yeah but interested. a lot of times I'm mixing it right. You know, I'm bringing on the half pint. I'm bringing on the. Uh, uh, I'm bringing on the uh, Sergeant Jays who made bust it, and then I'm coming with you, mm-hmm. and then I'm. Br- you see what I'm saying? But then we don't I'm mixing only do it, man. music. We also do mental health. Yeah, we do. We do everything. Yeah, man. So um, I have a question. Go ahead. So um, <clears throat> just like how Pimp C came to you and. Um, Ask your, your advice or pick your brain. Do you also um, help a lot of younger kids or other people even to up to today? Every day. Every day. That's a good question. I'm accessible. That's why as soon as you hit me, I, I, I Oh, answer. yeah, you was there, man. It's, it, it is and you don't it is. hold back. Cause you know, some no. people, they only give a little. They want to give you no, so I, much. I don't, I, don't, I don't hold back, and sometimes I get in trouble okay. with people, especially when I'm trying to help them. My process is unorthodox. I do things. Man, yeah. like we was talking about I, all I, I do things that other people won't do. I take chances that other people won't take. Wow. I'm a perfectionist, and I will push back if I don't feel like things are right. I don't do things for instant fame. I do them for a lifetime. Okay. If I can't plant a seed and get a harvest off, off of it every season, then I don't want it. Wow. How caught up do you get with the people that come to you and – um ask for advice because when they come to you and ask for advice I know they're not just coming to you one time they're coming to you a period of time and like for me I have a big heart so I I I care about people so when they don't do as I instructed I sort of get mad I don't get mad I just be become unaccessible (laughs) yeah Yeah, that'll teach you that's the best teacher because it's gonna bite them in the butt because you already know the next time you want to come through there and you need to ask me for something after I told you not to do something then it's gonna be a, a fee for it you got to pay me for my time. There it is. And okay. that's going to help you to understand you. even better. And I'm really you. starting to do it anyway because at the end of the day, I mean, knowledge is power. Mm-hmm. And power turns into money, too. No, no, no. Time. Yeah. yeah. All time, that stuff. All Everything. You know what I mean? And it, it count right now for me. It really a lot. all of it. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, you can't go to me in there, uh, top Fortune 5, top 100 Fortune guy and say, 
give me the process of what you did so I can use it. I want to use it. I want to do the same thing you're doing. Mm-hmm. They going you're going to go through a whole bunch of people mm-hmm. and talk to them. True. Then it may be a video. They might send you, "Hey, here's a video. Pay for this and you can uh, and you'll learn the process from that." You know, that's definitely a lot of people um that like when she was saying earlier when when my wife was telling you about how we go to people being an engineer and, and designing systems, I'm able to walk in those offices cuz I design fiber optics. So because I've been doing it for so long, those doors open up for us, and mm-hmm. we can talk to certain people that other people would never be able to just walk up to. I would, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but it has to be you never lied, you stay consistent. All those things matter. Mm-hmm. You see where I'm coming from? Yeah. If you don't do those things, nobody's going to believe in you. Nobody want because that's what y'all are talking about: right. integrity and staying focused and not doing things out of order. Yeah. You know. But sometimes I, mean, I think it me. helps. Sometimes I think it helps when you make it a little bit more difficult because it it shows how hungry the person is. Yeah. Because if it's so easy and accessible, they'll come to you and then they're just like, oh, oh but well, I mean, they don't do it, it. In this day and time, it doesn't even matter because everybody's, when you're looking at the internet and you're looking at social media, you're looking at the access that is given to every single person. Everybody exactly. has a voice. They control you. They can praise you. They can do whatever. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Everybody wants instant gratification for things. Mm-hmm. Nobody looks at the process of longevity. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. don't look at the stair stepping times that you have to take in the in the path of that. Just okay. taking a step at a time. They want to get to the first step and get all the way to, the, way top to the top in one step. Yeah. And that, and it doesn't it doesn't work that like that. The people that take the time to embed themselves in what they do, they are giants in whatever business it is and yeah. it lasts a long time a lot of people That's ask true. me that you know it's like how are you able to be in the music business for 30 years yeah mm-hmm. yeah because i can outwork everybody that's it i know it that's and, it and i call my own i call my own shots and the most important thing is not being financially enslaved to other people how, how and staying prayed up how yes, um, you gotta do that. that's first <laughs> how important do you think it is to learn how to follow before you leave very important. You see where I'm coming from? When you it, first started it, it's out. It's very important because now you have a lot of people that are following people. Even if they're not want to be leaders, they are following something that is not worthy to be followed. Mm-hmm. And now you're producing a bunch of crash dummies. Mm-hmm. You're producing a bunch of processes that are not the right processes. The wrong things are becoming right. <clears throat> because of all of those situations. Okay, so um, so the thing I, I, I definitely see in you, man, is you, and I'm gonna say this, because I thought about it before you came, um, and I might be wrong, I might be right. Did you do the Pac, any of Pac music after he had passed away? Yeah. And that's what I was thinking about. I say, mm-hmm. how is it, and then I ask you that then, mm-hmm. how is it that you, uh, how is it that you process um, this music after Nipsey Hussle is gone, after Pac is gone, once you push it out? Uh, let's talk about how you process it first, and then mm-hmm. I get to the other part. How do you, how, what, what, it, is it different now? It it's gotta be different. different. I mean, when I worked on the Pimp C's album, I cried. See, that's what I'm talking about. Was, See, I'm, I'm this is what because I'm, I, you know what I mean? It's, that was my friend. You did you, it with Pimp C too. Yeah, you hear. A person that's not here no more, breathing, laughing, yeah, giggling in the background, all of this kind of shit. And so it's it's difficult, you know. What yeah, I mean? like I did. I got a Blue Laces Three record that I just. I did. know. I, and you said I think I seen Rick Ross and somebody. Yeah, else on and there. even with that, you know, what I mean, I cried. You know, what I mean, like when I hear people or see people like, oh man, you shouldn't have put Trey or you shouldn't have did that. I don't even care yeah, about that too. part because at the end of the day, it's it's that's that's how I was able to to cope with the, the loss that I had. Yeah, with him. I just seen that, and I, I said, "Man, we don't we don't interview like other." I want to talk about yeah. the fact of that process for you because I know that process has to be difficult. It's hard. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're you've already built relationships with mm-hmm. these people. Now you got to go and make albums after your people you loved yeah. have passed away, and and you don't not only did it with Pac. But you did it with Pimp C, mm-hmm. and then now you're dealing with it with Nipsey, yeah. and that's that's a different whole mode, mm-hmm. man. That's something. And I probably, you know, I mean, even with that, I said I'm probably would never do it again, though. Yeah. 
with nobody. You know what I mean? Even with the blue lace stuff, it. I'm this not sampling it. that sample no more. I'm not doing none of that. Yeah. It's like when I talk to Scarfin, that's one of the main things he say, hey man, if I die, don't touch nothing else. He did. <laughs> Just let me let me let me lay down. He's a funny guy though. But that's <laughs> but that but I I get that though. Do he be joking or is he serious? Nah, he's serious. Okay. Mm. And if anybody ever come to me if something happens to him, I would never touch his music. Because he asked me he that. Asked that's right. Him. That's respect. And I'm never gonna do it. He, he, nobody else yeah. really. I don't wanna do that. You know what I mean? That's that's people don't understand how hard that is. Yeah, and, and then the effects of it and how it affects the people that are still here that was connected to him as yeah. well. Yeah. Me and you talked about that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I was telling him, I say, it, it, it's something about that. For him to be able to do that, yeah. that's something to think about. There's something to talk about. And because these youngsters are losing people every day. Yeah. I'm talking about artists, and they don't even get to go as far. It no. was just one past a couple of weeks ago. Oh, no, about a week ago we was talking about on here. Mm -hmm. they, they killed that, that you know, uh, two minutes suicide. Yeah. And it's like, man, you know, to see you dealing with that, you know, those guys, that, that's that's something else, man. It's healing in that. You got to try to get, that's a process. You yeah. go through traumatic distress, right? Yeah. And then you got to go through and try to figure this out. Like yeah, you say, you ain't cried. Ain't yeah, dude, it ain't nothing, it ain't, it ain't. You know what I mean? It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing clout chasing about that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Listening to somebody that you love and listening to them, and it's giving you a false sense that they're there, but they're not. Wow. I want to ask you about this because you you know this one. He was living when you did this one, right? Yeah. So this one here, you know, that that's meant to hustle. Yeah. That was my boy right there. I ain't meet him like you, but I met him. I met him at the hotel. Yeah, yeah. We talked too. Yeah. I was like, man, you ain't working hard no more. But this is a, because we got stores. Me and him. I went. I used to go to a store, take my yeah. wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I like black on business, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? So how did you, man? Listen at that, man. See that that right there, Mr. Lee. You know what I'm talking about? What did he say when you first showed him that, man? He gave me the fire emoji. What? <laughs> but he already knew he it was coming. He knew it was coming, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the Victory Lap had was a was a uh, collection of a bunch of records that he was that he had did years. It was years of work that he did. Okay. You know what I mean, Blue Laces is one of the newest, if not the newest song that he had did on Victory Lap. Yeah, yeah. And you know what I mean? And Nip was working and doing a bunch of stuff, and I called him nephew. He used to call me up. And you know, I got I got frustrated with him because he was moving around so much. We never we just got to work and do shit. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, he calls me, and it's like, hey man, I wrapped up the victory lap, but I need a Blue Laces two record, <laughs> and I'm not wrapping it up without you on it. So you know what I mean? I need you to do this record, and you know what I mean? I I took a day to decompress and not have the vibe of the first one in my head, and I I knocked the track out in about 10, 15 minutes and sent it to him. This one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You how good that sound? Mm -hmm. Man, stop playing, man. That's why this boss talk on one one on one, man. We don't do it like others. We come through, man. Yeah. I'm on these niggas neck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so do you only do um beats for rap or do you do beats? I'm a music for producer. I, I everything. Keep, I, I yeah, produce yeah. Backstreet Boys. Yeah. I've done Backstreet. Blige, I've Iggy, done, I, yeah, Iggy Azalea. Yeah, Iggy Azalea. I discovered Iggy Azalea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you about you that. You do gospel? The gospel's where my roots at. I got, yeah, that's, I got a whole gospel album that, right now. Yes, mm. sir. Yeah. When is it coming out? Soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dr. Dre. Like, yeah, I yeah. Got Dr. Dre <laughs> that's the way you be doing York. it. I, I, I live with my music and I don't, you know what I mean? That's a bad habit. How man. long does it take for you to put it out? Man, I've been working on that for like five years. <laughs> no. Yeah. And when you hear it, it's crazy. Wow. Who do you have on there? I got uh, a record with this with this guy from um, Dallas. His name is Moses. Okay. And he's on a lot of records that I have. I got this new artist that I just met that drove from Kansas to meet me and talk to me for 10 minutes. He drove down here. Are you serious? 10 minutes? Yes, 10 minutes. Wow. And he had a Why record. 10 minutes? Man, he just, I didn't even know he was, I was like, dude, so what you doing? He said, no, nah, I came down here to talk to you. <laughs> I was like, for real? Wow. So we, and he had this record called God in, God in, in You, mm -hmm. and uh, his name is CSG. I'm gonna be working with him. I got wow. a, I got a record with uh, Trader Truth on it. I got wow. a record with Nipsey Hussle on wow. it. Wow, that's gonna be uh, heavy, I a, man. I got a bunch of records, man. Like mm. it's the that hasn't the, even been put out. And that's the gospel album. Yeah, the message. Little Kiki's on there. Little Kiki on there. Little Kiki's on there. Man, shout Slim out Little Kiki, man. Slim, Slim Thug, Thug, man. These Texas boys, man. Yeah, Stop playing. I'll get hyped gospel. up. 
A lot say, of people go gospel. Yeah, yeah well, it, we, it's needed. But you know what I it's mean? It's therapeutic. The message. I been, it's been in me all this time. It you has to. So you I, told I, that I at first. Did. Yeah, so You I've need been, to put it out. Come on I'm now, gonna put stop. It out. <laughs> I'm getting ready to put it out. Get that's crazy, out. man. That, 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 that's the way it's supposed to be, man, because yeah. that's going to help people. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing about your in my generation, that the music would really reach out and touch and help somebody, yeah. even a hardcore rap. And yeah. that's what people... I, I've seen the process of how you guys did it you know far as because i listen to it i love music brother mm -hmm. and at the end of the day you guys man hey man i'm gonna say it again thank you so much man top three artists of all times man you got to give them to me mr lee mm -hmm. top three top three rappers it don't no. matter it can be any, any genre. genre three of them female you give, or yeah, female you gotta give them to everybody matter. come on here give us three we don't want but three. only three number yeah, one so KL gave me three come number, on number now one, number one is Scarface off top bam Texas man stop Gotta playing be. my boy Louisiana but he hit Texas hardcore yeah. Scarface <laughs> Scarface in the building all Brad day. Jordan all day that's okay, number, number one two. number two man it's gotta be Jay-Z Jay-Z yeah. man Jay-Z why Jay-Z man Jay-Z Jay Jay business Jay man Jay-Z's a businessman, but Jay-Z got skills man Man, he's got he got skills. Yeah, you met him, talked yeah. to him, and everything yeah, else, he's man. The truth, man. I seen him work. <laughs> I seen him sit. What, what? At, I seen him sit at the mixing board. I put a track on, and the dude was just just rapping in his head, mm. just head just moving. Then get in the booth, and it all come out. Like it wasn't nothing. Like it wasn't nothing, bro. Like you process the music you right now. This nigga rap like you process the music. Yeah, he's a he's a genius. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. You told me in minutes, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that's what he doing. This nigga go in there and just boom, boom, boom. Facts. And it's a hit. Yeah. Wow. That's heavy, man. Yeah. Hey, Jay, I'm a little hard on you, but boy, you yeah. sure making waves today. Yeah. <laughs> Shout three? out to Jay Z. Number three. Number three is Biggie Slash Nas. No, 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 you can't do that. You can't do that. So it's, it's, it's big. It's big. It's big. It's big all okay. day long. Okay. Yeah, man. That's a. That's a. I mean, really. What happened to Pop? Why not really, put can, Tupac? You can argue and say Scarface. And he Biggie. knew Tupac. No, I, why not Tupac over? Oh, Biggie? she upset. Come on now. Because when you talking about a, the best rapper. No, we just we saying my top three rapper top. has to do with the with the skills and everything else. Pac okay. was the best, one of the greatest entertainers of all time when it comes to rap music, period. He was the best revolutionary guy that rapped in the game, period. His message was the, one of the most felt messages as a rapper, period. But when but you're talking about rapping, Scarface, Jay-Z, Biggie, them skills. But how, how, how did Tupac process his music? Did you get to see him process? I didn't process? get a chance to see it, but, but just I seen, gave him I seen the Outlaws do it. Okay. And, and you know what I mean? And those my brothers. That, that was I mean? just like him. Yeah. yeah. And, they taught and, him everything. Man, he gave them an impeccable hustle skill set. Yeah. To do music. Yeah. And Pac would have conversations with with you with his music. Wow. He wasn't the most skillful rapper that mm -hmm. was. That's why my top three don't have him in it. Yeah. Top five, he's got to be in it. Yeah. So top three is going to be Scarface. Jay Z and Biggie, man. Yeah. That's our top three for the day. Yeah. Um, and out of all of, okay, because you've worked with so many musicians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Slim Thug. Some who Zero, just beginning, all of them. up mm -hmm. to today, all the way up to today. Mm -hmm. Some who are beginning, some who already passed, so forth. Out of everyone you've ever met, who would you say to you blew your mind because of their talent? It's two it's Scarface and it's Nipsey. Wow. Nipsey was romantic with his he music. That's what you he, said. He Meaning he would process it maybe a week, man, maybe he, two. When, when you hear it, when it's complete. But when he, he, it's going to be a masterpiece. It's going gonna, it's gonna, gonna, to be in your mind like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's just what it is. You know what I mean? Like he had that talent. Like Blue, when I heard the first Blue Laces record, it was months after we did it. And I gave him the track before I ever heard it, bro. Wow. And when I heard it, I was like, oh. That's it. Yeah. You man. normally write your beat. Write and, your oh, beat. Sorry, make your beat, <laughs> make your beat, one. and then um, contact someone and say, "Hey, no. this is you." No. Or do they come to you and say, "Hey, I, I need normally, for you to do"? My my thing is, I normally like to get in the studio, feel the artist vibe, and make the track. I know what I feel vibes. I feel. I look at body movement when I start working and making a track and forming the pattern of the drums and the instrumentation that I put in. I can do an instrument and play it in front of you, and if your body don't do a certain type of thing. Then I know you're not 
it, you're not feeling it. But yeah. see, your body's like this. So if my, if my if I catch the right vibration, your body's gonna jump like this morning. <laughs> you gonna know that's it. It's gonna do it, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just gonna happen. Yes, sir. If you hit the vibe right with this water, it's gonna bounce up and down. Wow. Have you ever met anybody you couldn't write a beat for because the vibes wasn't right? No. That boy bad. Listen, nobody. No, he's not. Nobody. No, I'm just, I'm just no, saying no, no, because no, he some bad. people do have bad energy. No. No, he, his music. I'll peel it out of. They love music, <laughs> but okay. I make I make the music compare. It's, the music is going to be made based on what they're feeling. If you're mm -hmm. sad, I'm going to make something sad for you. If you're aggressive, if you want to talk some shit, I'm going to make something that's going to make you talk shit. Sometimes I, I was sitting in the studio and just talk and not even let them know what I'm doing. I would just talk and just see where their mind is at. Yeah. And then when I go hit the keys, whatever the, the vibe I got from you is coming out in that music. I How many it. instruments can you play? Um, Man, about five or six. Hey, Amen. Yeah. So let me ask you this: All D three hundred, man. All D three hundred was just on here, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he say the greatest rapper alive. That's mm -hmm. what he said. Yeah, yeah. That's what he said. That's what he, he said. said. Yes, but what do you say? I mean, shoot, he's definitely got the greatest hustle for sure. That, that, it's different. It's <laughs> yeah. totally different. You know it's mean? tangible I in this day and time. I believe he's the greatest rapper alive because he believe it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Straight facts. I mean, I think Al D is a he, special talent. He's his music is you know something I mean, he's else. an opinionated sucker. Oh yeah, he gonna <laughs> exactly. argue. You gonna exactly. get you a good argument. I love it though. I, I love the I mean, dialogue. Him vibed off I right. love the dialogue of talking to him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying and because he has a perspective on things. Yeah, and I love to hear what it is. Yeah, you know he's a student and he's a a lover of what he does, and mm -hmm. that's so big for me. Yeah, I love it. You know what I'm saying? Like I've done almost ten hours with this guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I haven't. Charge him a dime for -uh. not done. But you know the dude is, the dude loves you, man. So yeah, you know nigga, that's man. the whole game, yeah. man. We when we giving out that brotherly love, yeah, man. We five you know, six hours deep before I ever met him. Ooh, that's heavy, man. Yeah. But see, man, you've been through so much. You you know people, man. I mean, you know what it is, man. A lot of people. I'm a vicious businessman. I I would admit that I am, and yeah. I've learned how to become that over the years. I wasn't always that way. Okay. But I'm on my business, and I would be very vicious with you if you don't handle your business with me the way you're supposed to. Okay. And I will give you exactly the same pie you made me. I'm going to give it back to you. Mm. Man. And when I give it to you, you're not going to like the way it tastes. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask but, you this. Oh, go ahead. But with, with Aldi, Aldi gave me love. Love. He gave me enthusiasm. He gave me inquisitive mind questions and all of that and that that I admired that so much until I was just deep in it I was like man we're just gonna keep working you know I send him tracks we just we just working it's understood it's not it's not even spoken wow. I mean dude we on crowns 10 I see I know yeah I, mean, I researched I'm like man yes. and I love the music like, I hadn't known nothing about it yeah and he called and when I listened to it I said He's special, oh man, man. I'm, I'm so happy to be involved yeah in his career because it's, the music means something. Yes. It's going somewhere. Yes. It and, touches And he you. does it on his own terms. He doesn't follow. So he don't compromise. He, he doesn't follow the trends or the, yeah, 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 or yeah. the rules of everybody else, what everybody think. Like, I, I, he threw me back one time when I first did the records with him, and he's like, yeah, the records is done. And I listened to one record, and it had one verse on it. And I'm like, nigga, is just, I, I think I hit him. He's like, yo, man, this song got one verse. No, that's it. That's done. It's done. <laughs> so, okay. No, no hook, no nothing. I'm like, mm. I went back and listened to it again. I was like, oh, okay, I get it, I get it. And it's like, man, just let the beat play, man. I want to feel the beat, just let it. And, and and you know what? When he did that shit, the which first which time, song was that? I forgot what it was. Okay. But that, he, I, I, when I, he first did that, bro, I respect him even more because I said, you know what? He's doing this shit by his own rules. Yeah, yeah. And it's nothing like that. And I told him that. And that's why he's his following is growing because every single time he gives a person a project, it's something that he's never done before on there. Boy, well, bad, man. Yeah. Bad. I listen to it. Bad. Yeah. Like I said, I like him. Mm -hmm. Is um, there anybody that you haven't worked with yet that you would love to work with? Not really. Not really? Not really. I would I wanna go back and get that Iggy Azalea Azalea story. How that how that all happened. I met her on MySpace. She was sixteen and um this was before she was with that guy. Yeah, her name uh, was Regal at, at the time. So and you was she with the, with the, the Wino and her? No, Wino met, met her through, through you. 
Okay, I'm not. Was supposed to be. I a, get it. He was supposed to be a writer, but he ended up being something. Else. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I discovered her on MySpace, and I told her once she turned eighteen to come down, and I start working with her. She came down because of you. Yes, yeah, she came down. To Why Houston. was she living at? She she was living in Australia first. Then she got had a boyfriend in Miami. She stayed with him for a little while, and then on the day before her eighteenth birthday, she showed up in Houston. She said, "I'm coming to work she with was you." Ready, bro. And she had a mouth on her. She was opinionated about shit. She didn't mind telling Same way she her. was at the end? She's still now. That's how mm. she's been. So that ain't nothing new. No, no. That's not no front. So that's when you grab right. and try to work with her, you're going to get all of that. You're going to get every bit of that. Shout out to Tip. I'll let you boy. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? I, I have developer, and uh, I pretty much gave her the tools that she's using now to this day. Wow. Yeah. Man, that's 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 dope because she did she she done numbers, man. Yeah, she did numbers. I think she could have went way. She could have went way. She could have went. She could have went way. What stopped her? I, I, having the, having people nodding at her when she's not doing the right shit, and having people not telling her that some of the shit you're doing you're going the wrong way. Okay. You know when you have, you can have the wrong support system. You know if you're having a support system that's just going to encourage you to do whatever, then that's not it. And um, that's so crucial, yeah. I think, in this business. But then. Some people are very intimidated by a person who is mouthy or who is very yeah. opinionated yeah. so that they'll be thinking one thing, but because they know you're going to keep, you know, going back with them, they don't want to even have to stand up to no, that. No, but I believe you know a, lot I mean? of, a lot of people will compromise themselves in the process that they have because of the money, too. Wow. True. To me, I don't care. You know what I mean? I will walk away from you. I don't care what type of bag you got. Mm. If I don't want to deal with you, I'm not dealing with not you. Not dealing with it you. Is, it just is what it is. I got to ask this question because I ask it a lot. If uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Lee could go back and speak to uh, Leroy mm -hmm. back in, uh, uh, <coughs> I want to say back in. Um, Louisiana or back in Houston? No, in Houston when he first got there. No, and back, yeah, back. let's get back to Louisiana. Back when he was younger. and um, Before the streets? <clears throat> Dang, that's kind of hard because them streets coming, man. No, 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 no. When he got to Houston, man, what would you tell yourself to try to uh, help you prepare for what you're about to face? When you got to Houston, you, that young guy, that 20-year-old, that 21-year-old. I mean, just be prepared mentally. Because you're about to go in. To have the knowledge to understand what you're doing. Okay. You know what I mean? And, and not fall subjective to things that are on the surface. Mm. And what I mean by that is that the same thing everybody else is doing, and now I've done that shit already. Yeah. You know, we're spending 25, 30, 40,000 a day. Yeah. The watches. Yeah. All of the Rolexes. Yeah. Bust down shit. My shit playing like your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing Jack. I don't, you know what I mean? I feel like everybody has, everybody, are, they have, they are financially set in a lot of ways but they destroy themselves every day with things that are not relevant. That's not even relevant. That Materialistic. Shit. Yes. Everything's of the flesh. Yes. Man. That shit is, that shit is wearing our, our, our people, people out. Our culture is suffering by yeah, it. Yeah, it's suffering big time by it and we're empowering the wrong people with our money. Wow. I get it, man. Yeah. I don't want to hold you forever, but I do want to ask you about the legend talk. What's going on with that? This is a little Kiki, man. Okay, that's his brand. Yeah, this is a little Kiki. Tell him, to, tell him to come do an interview. I'll put yeah. some of them in here and I'll buy I some from man, him. I had to, Listen I had to, to me, man. You hear what I yeah. said? You his partner. Say, so, hey, man, he been over there for 15 years. He's a black-owned business. He's a solid dude. You bring it over. He say he'll buy it from you. Give him an interview. Oh, he's going to call you immediately. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> yeah, he man. Did you hear what I said? I buy something from you. He gonna I, do put, that. I had Pow Wow's in here. I, I, yeah, he's going to do all that. You listen know what to Because he ain't going to turn down no bidding. That's, you want to talk about somebody that's a hustler? Yeah. Lil Kiki don't get no credit for the shit that he does. Oh, yeah? And that he, what he's done. Yeah. And the success that he has, had, has, and have. Wow, he doesn't. I love. I'm gonna be honest with you. I love the way it looks because he, he it's don't simplified. It. He don't. He don't get. He don't get all of his just due, man. That dude is incredible. Yeah. You know, what I mean, I don't know nobody that between him and Slim, I don't know too many people that can out hustle them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Slim go hard I don't too. Care what they say. I've always. I see Slim more because I be on his IG. But I'm definitely, I'm definitely. If he comes, if he come give me my interview, I'm buying some of that merch and I'm putting it up right in here. I'm putting it right. I'm gonna put it right up in here, I'm man. We can get him on the phone. Yeah, man. 
might so, be tied up. You know, it's different. Yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all be busy, man. I respect he, he, y'all, he, man. He definitely come down though, so sure. much. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Trilly Pope came down. B Banks came down. I've had some Houston mm-hmm. artists. Who else just came from Houston? Yeah, yeah, no. That young girl. Yeah, but she was. Kind of she from Thailand, Thailand, Houston, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But people been coming up, flying in from, like you say, the guy flew. They've they been coming. I mean, how you like the setup? We didn't even ask you. Yes, yeah, dope. We just got here. We just yeah. got in the game. We we cruised in about four and a half months ago. Yeah, and the these crowd. boys, they scared. They said, man, what is that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Boss Talk 101. Young Don. I said, man, I got somebody want to buy your material from you right yeah. now. You clo- all your clothes, man. They want them in the store now. Yes, sir. I was talking about he want to get he, he want to take a look at your garments What's going right on, now, man? man. This guy right here, what man. Do, my guy? Hey, how you doing, man? This boss talk one on one, man. ECEO. I told him I said if you get a little kiki on this show, I say I put the merch in my store. I've been there fifteen years, black owned business, brother. He said, I got you, he, said, get he, he said he need to buy. He said he want to buy now. I told him I said you don't say don't buy shit to this I'm nigga. Gonna buy, he I'm going. I'm going to spend some money with it. But I've been spending with everybody else. Ti, I spent. I've been selling a coup since '08 when it first came out. I've been doing this. I, I bet I got you. We're gonna put a play together. I got you. <laughs> hey man. Right. Hey, I enjoy your stuff, man. I, I'm a big fan. Well, shit, that's a bet. I'm gonna tie you in with it, man. All right, bro. All right. Yeah, I've been. I support our people. I just yeah, they don't. Brother, I didn't you know, know he I mean? had no clothing line. Did yeah. you? I yeah, didn't know. I mean, that's 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 that. See, like that right there, man. Like him, Nipsey was like that. Slim is like that. See, that's how me and Nipsey rock. Because and how long call, he's been call. doing this? How long he's been doing the clothing? He been doing this for man about ten years. See, oh, and I home. didn't even know it. And he's been making a grip off of this shit, man. Let me tell you something, man. If if like me and me and Nipsey met because of magic, we go to apparel show in yeah. Vegas. We've been going. We everybody meet there. We, that's why you see all them pictures on yeah. the wall. Uh, or in New York or wherever the clothing at. If you dealing with clothing, you dealing with me. Yeah, I'm that's, doing it. I'm doing it now too. I got a so, blue laces really? line. Yeah. So you come, oh, you gonna, are you gonna do magic or you ain't yeah, messing with? I'm gonna I'm mess with it. I got a blue laces. Uh, if you if you come everything. up, if you, it's in August, everything, man. August ninth, the ninth, ninth through the eleventh. If you come yeah. up, man, we gonna rock out because it be going down. Yeah, I'm doing all of that. I got shirts that that uh, have all of my hits on it. So, oh, then, cool. so you gonna you gonna bring me some? Yeah, I'm gonna buy them from you. I bring them to you because I don't I don't do no consignment none of that. I, I put my money up because yeah. I'm gonna hustle harder for me. Yeah, I ain't gonna hustle and if I pick mm-hmm. it, I want it and it's mine. Right there, yeah. <laughs> <Don't blame. laughs> that's the way I do it, man. Yeah. And, and I told Don Chief I ain't heard back from him. he got about he got he got that shoe line. He got some His shoes. Shoe yeah, I try to look out for anybody, like man. I because I already been buying clothes all these years. Yeah, and I had seven stores, man. That's dope. So, so God been good. I got to raise my kids in this. If I don't that's do nothing it. else, that's man, show lead by example. Man. Hey, man, that's it, man. So, man, we love you, bro. I love you. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Appreciate it. See, that's the cold part about. It. See, we killing them, man. <laughs> These niggas ain't knowing about loving each other. No, no. So, so we love you, brother. And I do know that I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk to my cousin about whooping up on him in some golf. I'm gonna put my money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He be playing that golf, so man, he yeah. gonna have his shit together. I to promise you, he gonna have it together. That is a game that you have to have. Patience. I'm a caddy. I'm gonna get if out there. Pouring the, pour the course, mm-hmm. he better leave me alone. He coming, uh-huh. bro. He coming. I'm take somebody else. He ain't gonna fade either. It's Scarface. Scarface go hard. He did? Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put it together. I'm gonna talk to my cousin. I'm gonna put it together. I'm gonna yeah. see what y'all talking about. I'm gonna yeah. say okay. Cause they just let him know, He's man. Good with it. I'm, I'm talking about Kevin yeah, and I Keith. I'm talking, talking about the brothers. Yeah, I'm two hundred yards. I'm two hundred yards out with a six iron, man. I can promise wow. you they finna come for you. Nah, he better bring his shit together. <laughs> I'm telling you. I love it, man. Yeah. Tell you, me, you gonna be on the phone and be like, hey, man, I got my cousin right yeah, here. Bring his ass up. <laughs> I'm play every other day. They gonna be. I know. I, I played I play today. I know it. That's what I'm telling you. I was yeah. like, man, LD was like, you ain't gonna get me on that golf course. Yeah. You gotta get it. I said, I gotta don't get play it, with man. Me on that shit, man. Say, I will get in on that. Say, golf. man, I'm sure enough for to put me something together. I know it too. Live in Houston. Oh yeah, too. one of one of here, one of them here, and one of them in Houston. But they brothers, but they play a lot. They go everywhere too. They would. One of them, used, they used to go more, but now yeah. they they stay by the high age too. Mm-hmm. Same thing, man. I love it, man. Yeah. I'm just gonna watch and, and, and enjoy. I'm ready, man. <laughs> I can I, tell. Yeah. I'll be the caddy. That, making tracks. <laughs> yeah, that's the same shit. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on the show, man. We I love you. It. And you say you're gonna come back. I'm coming uh, back. Get his word. I already know. I'm getting the word. Me, I'm coming. Yeah, you you giving me your word that you're gonna be here. I'll be there. So we're gonna make another date. 
me and you, mm -hmm. it'd probably be somewhere in August after we come back from Vegas and all that. Yeah. And I'm gonna ask you to come back on the show. Hey, let's do it. Man, thank you so much, man. You're a blessing, man. I, man, I appreciate it. Who, I appreciate the guys who got me in contact with you, man. I love the way everybody's supporting Boss Talk 101. Mr. Lee, a, a, a platinum, listen, a platinum yeah. producing art, uh, uh, a producer is in the building. And y'all know already, man, our interview went hard, man. I love it, man. Appreciate Boss it. Talk 101. Yes, sir. And we out.